I want to thank everybody for being here in God's house this morning. Everybody that, that came together and, and, and uh, made our worship time work through adversity. Amen. Amen. The devil can make us trip and sometimes we can fall down. But what's, uh, what's important is that we get back up again. Amen. Amen. You know, as I was studying this week, and you can go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. As we all stand together, we understand today is our Thanksgiving service. We have so many things to be thankful for as you get to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. We'll all stand together. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 reads like this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. We thank You for allowing us to be here in Your house to worship You, Father, to praise Your holy name, to bring glory to You and to Your kingdom, Father. I pray that Your Spirit would be here with us, that we would just overflow with Your Holy Spirit today, Father. And that everything we do would be pleasing to You, Father. I pray that You would anoint this message, Father, that You would speak every word through me, give me every thought to have, Father, so that when we all leave this place today, Lord, we know we've had an experience we do. And I thank You for that. So in the name of Your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Had the pleasure, well, let me get away from the pulpit. I had the pleasure, remember I can't lie from the pulpit anymore. Had an opportunity this uh, past Friday to go hiking. I, I always like to, I guess I'm a little bit of a Doug Dynasty guy in a way at heart. Uh, you know, I like to just get out in the woods, get out in the mountains sometimes and just have some time of fellowship with myself and my Lord. And there's nothing that will do that better to me in my life than to just getting out in the middle of the woods somewhere and enjoying His creation. Well, I got to do that this past Friday evening. Uh, uh, Brother Philip, our church leader, and I, we, we hiked out in the National Forest uh, Friday evening. And, and we stayed out, out in the woods Friday night and we hiked back out Saturday morning, yesterday morning. Well, as a part of that, you know, what, what's really wonderful about that is getting so far out into the woods, so far away from civilization, so to speak, that you're just there. You know, there's there's no encumbrances by anything. You're just you're just there on your own. It's just you and God. And and I did have some great time of, of prayer and worship and more prayer and then some more prayer. Uh, you'll know why in a minute. I'll tell you the rest of the story. We hiked out to a place called uh, Blue Mountain Shelter. It was a shelter by, built by the State Park Service many many years ago. Uh, one of those projects that I was very thankful for Friday night. That's what we're planning on going. It's, it's a wooden, uh, a rock and wooden structure uh, that has, it's a shelter out in the middle of the National Forest. And uh, it's built there for hikers to have a place to shelter. And if you remember Friday night, it was supposed to rain and it did. Uh, so we were thankful to have the shelter. We, we hiked out, it was about two and a half miles from where the, from the nearest road. Uh, we hiked out to the shelter. We got there. It's a it's a, it's a wonderful structure. It's, it's wooden, three-sided, uh, wood roof, uh, you know, has a, has a bottom floor, and then a ladder that goes up to a loft area. And the loft area gets you up off the ground, gets you away from, you know, coyotes and wolves and bears and, and all sorts of things worse than that that we could imagine when we start hearing all the noises out in the woods. <laughs> but this, uh, this loft and this shelter was... You know, it's, it's, where, it's where you sleep. Well, 
We got there and it was kind of late. We'd already been through some prayer time because it was getting darker. And by the way, I don't know what they're teaching in school anymore, but I found out that as a unit of measure, a mile is longer now than it was 20 years ago. <laughs> so when I thought two and a half miles, and we hiked for what seemed like hours, I know in reality it was only about 45 minutes, but what seemed like hours, and we weren't to the shelter yet. And I started crying out to God. Every peak that we went around and I was expecting to see that shelter, I threw another prayer out. And again, I don't know if it's the metric system messing with us or what. I'm not in favor of the metric system, obviously. I can't even get the regular... English system down pat myself, much less deal with some other system of measuring things, but I can confirm for you a mile is now longer than it was 20 years and 30 pounds ago. Amen. <laughs> so in our prayer time, we, we get to the shelter and we're thankful. I can just imagine we felt like the Israelites did when the, that Red Sea parted and they got to the other side and it, and it came back together and destroyed the Egyptian army. That's how I felt when we got to the shelter. It was starting to rain a little bit, starting to drizzle, and, and we were, uh, I'd say, tired. Is that tired? Amen. Good enough? Yes. Amen. I'm going to get some amens from Philip today. <laughs> we get there, it's just about dark. There's no opportunity to get back out of there. We're there. Uh, if you know anything about the hiking trails in the National Forest there, you know that they're that they're very steep, uh, uh, very much changing terrain, very rocky. Uh, it's impossible to hike back out of these trails at night. So once you've uh, expended all your daylight, uh, you're there. There's nowhere you can go. You're there. And it was cloud covered because it was raining very dark. And uh, we get there, our wood's all wet, so it's, it's, it's starting a fire is not going to happen. So really, we, we decided to just pack it in for the night, try to get us a good night's sleep there in the shelter, and then get up and, uh, and hike back out the next morning. There's one problem. The bat. <laughs> you know what a bat is. Apparently, bats in the National Forest now are like the miles. They're longer, they're bigger than what I had hoped, what I'd imagined. There was a bat in our shelter, right up there in our loft where we were going to sleep. Philip got up there to uh, sweep the dust and stuff off that, off that platform up there where we are going to put our sleeping bags and sleep. And he hears a fluttering sound. He thinks I'm messing with him, but I'm not. I'm downstairs. And he hears a fluttering again. Sounded like the wings of a great eagle, I think is what yeah. you described it. A pterodactyl. A pterodactyl, maybe. Well... All we have is a flashlight. Small. I'm talking about small flashlight. That's all we have for light, okay? So he's taking the flashlight and he's shining it around and, and he gets a glimpse of this gigantic, enormous, winged, fanged creature. <laughs> Swooping back and forth. Man, we we'll get to that in a minute. Swooping back and forth in our loft. The only place we have to sleep. The thing, the creature finally lights on the roof part. This high above where we're going to sleep. Philip comes down the ladder very rapidly. I didn't know he could move that quick. I didn't know he could move that quick at all, but he came down pretty fast. Light, light, and he was out of there. And we're standing out under the, you know, the downstairs part of the shelter, the roof that came out, and we're, we're trying to get a plan. And uh, we decide that it's, it's either us or the bat. But only one of the two groups can occupy the shelter. We can't both be there. We wouldn't sleep. The bat, I'm sure he didn't like us being there either. But, you know, bats have rabies, that sort of thing. And, and we've, we've made the bat angry in our dealings there in his shelter. Uh, a lot of thoughts go through your mind then. You know, when it's you and a bat in a dark area and there's no way to get out. Uh, we thought about sleeping on the wet ground and we quickly ruled that out. You know, even though the bat's wingspan was this wide at least, 
It's getting wider. It started about this big, and now he's this big. The next time I tell the story, I'll have to get some help to hold, you know, to show how wide he is. But for now, he's this wide. And, and we decide that, that we can't sleep on the wet ground. It's dark and extremely dangerous. There's no way we can hike back out. So we're going to have to take the shelter. Yeah. We have no option. We've got to take the shelter from the bat. I'm thinking Phillips, a police officer, you know, he, he's got a gun. Uh, I hate this is on the internet now. We weren't in the actual park area, so it's okay to have a gun. <laughs> That's my disclaimer. But he had one, and shooting a hole through the roof to try to shoot the bat was, we ruled that out pretty quick. And what we decided was we had a camp shovel. Now, the camp shovel was only about this long. And let's face it, just plain old fear made it impossible for either one of us to get that close to the bat. So throwing the shovel at the bat didn't seem like a good idea. So what we finally did was we took one of our walking sticks, which is about this long, and we tied the shovel to it. Hang on, it gets better. Dylan says, wow, you haven't heard the rest of the story. <laughs> what we've decided is that me being the better looking and, and the preacher, <laughs> that I would hold the light. I'm telling the story? I'm holding the light, and he's going to take this, what we've called a halberd, you know, which is not something to fight a cold weapon. And I'm going to hold the light on the bat up there from the ground safely, where I can stay out of the way. And, and Philip is going to take the pole, which is now you know pretty extensive with this camp shovel on the end of it, and he's just going to smash the bat, and then we're going to drop everything and run out. <laughs> That's our plan. That's why prayer is so important. So important. Because even as stupid as we are, and even as harebrained as our plan was, God worked it out. God worked it out. After 30 minutes of scheming, it's getting colder, it's raining more, we decide we're going to have to go in. We're going to have to take back the shelter. We go back in, he's got the, the halberd in his hand, and I've got, I'm have got i wielding the flashlight, and I go to shine it up there, and we don't see a light. We think he's relocated. He's repositioned. <laughs> because he's planning on us coming in to attack. He's going to ambush us. So we start looking around. The bat was gone. He got out of there. I say he was so scared of us that he decided just to leave. He overheard our plans. <laughs> Something about bats feeding at night may have had something to do with it, but whatever. Potato, potato. Say it how you want to. It's my story. <laughs> we say the bat got scared of us and fled. I'll tell you this, he didn't come back while we were still there. <laughs> so you can say he left out to go feed at night if you want to, but I know he didn't come back while we were still there. And we slept with a halberd laying <laughs> next to us. He had the halberd right there and I had the flashlight right here. We were good. We were ready to go. <laughs> but you know what's funny? I can think of a bat and its fangs that long and rabies and all things like that. Fact of it is, we got struck with a little bit of fear. And I think of this as a Christian... What is it in this world that we really have to be afraid of? What does God's Word say? It says, He has not given us the spirit of fear. He's not given us the spirit of fear. What is it I have to truly be afraid of? That was a funny experience, and I know we'll share it for years and years, and, and the story will get, I'll get braver and better looking, and Philip will still be Philip, and the back will get bigger, but... All in all, the truth of it is, 
is we really had something that we were a little bit afraid of. <laughs> and I dare say that each one of you here has things in your life <coughs> that whether you admit it or not, you will be afraid of. And I read God's Word and it says, He's not given us a spirit of fear. So if that spirit of fear is not from God, where is it from? The devil. The devil. Amen. It made me think about fear a little bit. And, uh, you know, fear that the bat was going to give one of us rabies. Fear that he might come back during the night. Uh, fear that Philip might snore all night and I might get any sleep. He didn't snore. What is fear really? What is it? Well, I start by saying, what is fear really not? If we want to look at what fear really is, let's look at what fear is really not. First, it's not being timid. Deuteronomy 31.6 tells us, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Fear is not being timid. Fear is not being uncertain. For the Lord says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Fear is not being anxious. Romans 8 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Fear is not <coughs> Fear is not. <coughs> and I'm sorry if I get excited about that. But I'm excited that fear doesn't come for the Lord. Because now I can identify. I know what fear is not. These kinds of fear. Anxiety. Timidity. Uncertainty. These things are not from the Lord. They're from the devil. And He uses them to have us so gripped in fear that we take our focus off the only thing we should be focused on. And that's our Lord Jesus. If He can have us be afraid, if He can have us be anxious, if He can have us be timid, before long we'll be paralyzed by that fear. We'll be paralyzed by that anxiety. We'll be paralyzed by that timidity. And we won't do anything. You see, even though it's a silly story, and it's a story that I've obviously embellished on a little bit, we only had victory over that fear when we decided to do something about it. And until you decide to do something about those things you're afraid of in your life today, until you take control and follow Jesus and put our trust in Him, that fear will always have control over what you do. And although that's a silly story, some of you have some real fears in here this morning. Some of us are really afraid that that next paycheck is not going to pay that next set of bills. Some of us are really afraid about our kids going off to college and what they'll be influenced by. Some of us are really afraid about what people are telling our kids at school. Some of us are really afraid about our jobs. Some of us are really afraid about our relationship with our wife or our husband. Some of us have some real fears this morning. But now we understand what fear is. We understand what fear is not. I want to look at this. Is there a good fear? Is there a good kind of fear? Look at Proverbs 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10.
Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So wait a minute, Brother Tim. Just a minute ago, you said fear, anxiety, uncertainty is from the devil. That's right. But we're not just called to read the Scriptures. We're called to study the Scriptures. And when you study the Scriptures, you understand that where it says fear here, where it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, this kind of fear is an awestruck wonder, an extreme adoration, honor, and respect. It's not the same kind of fear. It's different. In fact, the word used is even different. The Hebrew word for fear is yare. And it means to stand in awe of, to reverence, to honor, and respect. Are we to fear? Yes. We're to fear the Lord. The Scripture clearly teaches us to fear the Lord. Are we supposed to be anxious? No. Are we supposed to be uncertain? No. Are we supposed to not know what's going on or not know what's happening? No. God gave us His holy, precious love letter to us just so we could understand Him. We should stand in awe of. We should stand in respect of. We should be at God's house in honor of Him today. Amen. He tells us to fear Him to Yare Him this morning. That's the kind of fear we should have. We should certainly have that kind of fear today. What should we fear? One last Scripture. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10 and 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear Him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. As I read that, and I try to better understand fear, I'm thinking of all the things I'm so thankful for today. I'm thankful one of us idiots didn't slip down and break an ankle. I'm thankful that I really had some times where I cried out to the Lord as we walked through the woods, walked through His creation, and He heard my voice. Amen. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm so thankful I'm so thankful that I put my trust and my faith in Jesus Christ. Because with a faith and a trust in Jesus Christ, I may be anxious about something. I may use caution. I don't go stand and preach in the middle of the highway. Amen? I don't jump out of perfectly good airplanes. Amen? I use caution. I use wisdom. But I make mistakes. And God tells us, don't fear those who can only kill the body, but fear Him who can kill both soul, both body and soul in hell. And there's only one that has the power to do that. Satan likes to try to tell us that he has power over your life. That he has power over what you do. He has power over your relationships and your circumstances. But I'm telling you, he does not. Amen. And I'm so thankful for so many things this morning. And we should just spend this week being in prayer just thanking the Lord for all the things He's done for us. Amen. We should be thankful that we're here this morning. We should be thankful that we even are able to carry His Holy Word anywhere we want to this morning. We should be thankful that we can gather together in fellowship without fear this morning. Let me tell you what I'm most thankful for. 
I'm most thankful that a sorry lowdown, good for nothing sinner like me, could go before his holy cross and cry out to his son Jesus and put my faith and trust in him. And because of that, I don't have to fear what I'm certain there are some in this room that fear this morning. There's some here today and there's some out there that right now, this morning, fear eternity. And if you've not put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you're not following Jesus Christ, you should be in fear of that today. But I'm thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful. Then I went to an altar and I said, Lord Jesus, I love You. Lord Jesus, I don't understand all this. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need You. And He answered me. Amen. Whatever it is you're afraid of this morning, let me tell you this. He'll answer you Amen. too.